Hello, my name is Tom Morgan and today I'm going to be looking at the Ubiquiti uh, Unify video recording uh, setup. So specifically what you see in front of you is Unify's uh, network video recorder here, their G3 Bullet Outdoor uh, fully waterproof camera here and their G3 uh, Dome camera here. Now I've already done unboxing videos of all of these um, but what I haven't done is plug them in anywhere and set them up. So what I thought I'd do was uh, do that now and record the process so you can see exactly what happens. So just to be absolutely clear, I've not plugged any of these devices into anything at all yet. So I have those in front of me. I have a bunch of network cable and in front of that here, um, I have a eight port switch. Now let's say a Unify switch, that means it's power over ethernet and that's useful for plugging the cameras into because it means they don't have to have external power. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is plug in the just the network video recorder by itself first because uh, we should be able to see that even without plugging any cameras into it. We'll get that up and running and then we'll plug cameras into it after that uh, once, we're, once we're set up. All right, so let's move these out of the way. And so we've got the unit here. We need to provide it with some power. It comes with a, a transformer. So I'm just going to plug that in the back. Like so. It needs to be wired in to, um, to your network. So let's pick port at the end and pop that in. All right, that goes like that. So we can see that's wired in. Um, and then I just need to plug this transformer end to the cable. Right, let's see what happens. There are some power buttons on the front. Um, a bit unclear about whether or not I need to press them, but nothing is happening. So I'm just going to give one a give one a press and see what happens. So blue light comes on, and I can feel the fans now spinning. So I'm going to carefully stick it back down again. Now, looking through the, uh, the user guide, the quick start guide for the network video recorder, uh, it tells me there's a couple of different ways uh, I need to, I can connect to it. And that's because it's all to do with, you know, the IP address it goes to. There is a, um, uh, there's a plugin for Chrome that you can get that's the device discovery tool, which allows you to kind of di discover your device on the network. Or if you don't want to do that, you can directly wire it to a, um, to a PC as well. Because I plugged it into my network, what I'm hoping I can do, uh, and this isn't actually in the user guide, but I'm hoping it works anyway, is just look at my Unify dashboard for the device showing up, because it will show up as a either a, a device alongside the switches and the APs, or possibly just as a user. Um, either way, because it's on the network, it will show up. Um, and then that gives me the IP address, and then I can hopefully just go straight to the IP address. Um, and uh, won't have to mess around with installing any plugins or anything like that. So I'll give it a couple of minutes just to just to spin up. Um, I'm not sure if the, the the LED has gone blue straight away, so I don't know necessarily that it follows the kind of standard ubiquity uh, color scheme for its LEDs. You know, we're starting out white for initializing and then being adopted and stuff like that. It's gone straight to blue, so. I imagine probably it just needs me to connect to it. So looking uh, looking at my Unified Dashboard then, uh, if I refresh the list of devices, it doesn't show up as a device. And I guess that's to be expected because it really isn't um, a device as such. But down here, this is a new um, this is a new user, and I know it's the right one because it's in the right port on the on the switch switch uh, port number eight. Um, and so that gives me the IP address, which is handy. So I'm just going to take that IP address. And I'm just going to go there in the browser. Perfect. And that takes me here. I'm guessing this is probably the right place to be. Um, so there's a click to log on. So I'm now connecting to the, uh, the network video recorder itself. Okay, so uh, it hasn't got a SSL certificate. That makes sense because it's just an IP address. And it's taken me to the first time, first time setup. So at this point, um, I shall name it um, 
I'm not really sure what I want to name it really. Um, I'll just call it um, NVR. Uh, that's my, I think that's right anyway. Uh, I agree to the terms of service. I'll read those later. Um, click next. And that wants me to set up a local admin account. So I'll put my name in here, username, uh, password, and click next. Okay, um, and now it wants me to choose a password for your cameras. So any cameras that you manage will be updated to use this password. Okay, so I'm gonna use a password for that as well. All right, so it's now searching the network for cameras and it's not gonna find any, so I'm just gonna click skip um, and see where we go. Okay, so where it's taken me to is what looks like, like a camera dashboard, like just so, just so you know, I'm looking at this for the first time as well, if you remember, I've not plugged this in previously. So it looks quite a lot like the, um, the standard Unify dashboard for Wi-Fi. You can see the same kind of look and feel, but uh, there's obviously no cameras here. What I'm gonna do then is, I think, plug in a camera and then see see where we go from there because I'm um, having just got rid of the searching network for cameras, um, it might be actually quite useful uh, to come back to that once I've plugged a camera in. All right, so the first camera uh, I'm going to set up is going to be this one. So this is the uh, the G3 camera. Uh, it's fully weatherproof. You can mount it outdoors. Um, I've done a full unboxing um, of the of this unit on another video, so I'm not going to talk about it in loads and loads of detail. Um, but let's just take that off so that we can get at the just so we can get at the Ethernet port right down there. And there might be a better way, ah, there is a better way. Perfect, that's even better, of getting to the Ethernet port. Okay, so, annoyingly I've only got some really long cable here, so let's just, let's just take a couple of bits of this cable off, but hopefully not all of it. So, let's plug one end of this cable in here, and then just plug it in. Now I don't know whether it, whether I know whether it does anything to know that it's been plugged in um, or whether I need to turn anything on. I've just plugged it in. That's literally all I've done. There's no, I don't think there's any lights or any kind of obvious sign of life. Uh, so I'm just going to put that back on the table. Just stick that there. Might take a little while to, to start up. Notice that the, uh, I don't think the network light for port two where I've just plugged it in, um, I don't think it's actually doing anything yet. So I might just give it a couple of minutes to see if it takes a little while just to start up. So I'm just gonna pause the video, come back in a couple of seconds. Okay, well I've left it a couple of minutes now, hasn't done anything, hasn't changed. Um, still the network light hasn't uh, lit up on the switch either. So um, it might be a number of things. It might be the cable, it might be the device. There might be the, some special thing we need to do to turn them on. What I'm gonna do just to see is just flip it out and swap it for the, for the dome. Because that will just um, highlight, you know, if there's any, maybe I've got a dud camera or something like that. So let's try plugging the dome one in instead. Okay, so instantly that does something. So blue light comes in on the side um, and the port light has already lit up actually um, for this port. So, and it, something else, like it made, a, it made a noise on the inside, if that makes sense. Something kind of clicked or um, buzzed or like there was some indication that it's doing something. And this blue light is now flashing if you can see that. Um, there's a blue light on the side, there we go, on the side of the device that's flashing blue. Okay, so I'm just going to pop that down there for a second and now if we come back to the 
um, if we come back to the app straight away um, this camera has just popped up on the dashboard um, it's got a little icon of the camera and it's got a name um, the IP address MAC address and its link state is unmanaged so I'm not sure if I can manage it I can so I can give it a username and a password um, so I'll give it a username and a password and I think that means I'm then managing it um, let's do that and click the manage button okay and so what what we want to do really is just see if we can get some video from it so I'll click the video button um, and it says please provide the correct login credentials for this camera ah now maybe I haven't or maybe I have and I need to put them in again and save them this time now that I've managed it um, let's try no let's have let's come back here and see what our state is then we're unauthenticated ah so maybe the, it could be that there's a default uh, username and password that I need to put in first to manage it let's have a look because our link state is still uh, showing oh here we go I don't want to unmanage the camera I didn't mean to click that so let's come back here and let's just see if uh, there's anything we need to do yeah so according to the user guide which I should have read um, the default username and password for managing these cameras is uh, UBNT so let's do that let's save and if we close that now this still shows as unauthenticated but let's just give it a, a refresh and see camera is upgrading settings will be available once the upgrade process is complete okay so it's doing something um, so I better wait for it to finish doing what it's doing okay so the link state is now showing is 100 megabits um, oh and now disconnected so I think it's still doing its thing so, look. so the blue light on the side is now solid blue um, instead of flashing blue before it's now a solid blue um, and so that's good and then coming back here it's now green and connected and there's a live feed button so if I click the live feed button hopefully there we go I'm just gonna disable the microphone for a second because I was getting some really bad feedback um, now you can see uh, I'm getting uh, stuff from the from the device so if I put it the right way up uh, you can see and as I turn it you can see that live feed updating in real time as I do it it's pretty responsive as I turn it so it's all pretty good so I'm going to pop that back down for a second and close that and let's just look at some of the um, some of the settings and things that we can look at and change so uh, there's some resolution stuff with the suggested settings but we can choose to override that and provide our own um, definition of of uh, resolution um, we can set a uh, on-screen display by default there's a watermark and a timestamp uh, we can also provide a, a message to override uh, we can enable or disable the LED that you saw and then if we want to use um, RCSP service we can do that as well I can put it into recording mode or record on motion or record on schedule the motion detection I can specify a number of zones so this is cool this is um this allows me to pick a particular zone and say if there's motion just in that particular zone um, then and depending on the sensitivity then only do the recording then uh, and that's cool and there's a lot of flexibility here with the seconds to record before and after the zone as well so I'm gonna have some fun configuring that when um, when I actually get them up on the wall uh, outside and start to play around with exactly how that works 
there's some statistics here. Obviously, because I've just turned it on, it's unlikely that there's going to be anything interesting in here, but you can see the sort of things you can look at. CPU memory, network and disk, uh, all good things to keep an eye on. Um, and then I can choose to unmanage it as well. I can choose to give it a name. So depending on where I put this, I'll probably name it therefore, you know, where it's, its location rather than its model. Um, and then obviously like it shows here, um, coming down the left hand side, there's some cool stuff here that um, I can provide a map. And if I do that, um, I can place the cameras on the map. So for instance, I can take this, uh, this dome that I have, and I can say it's here. Now this isn't my floor plan, but if it was, you know, this would be useful because I can then say uh, you can place the camera um, and from there get a good feel for how much space, you know, how, uh, you know, the, the field of vision, if you like, of the camera. So if you've got an area you need, you need covered, then, um, then it's quite good to do that. Uh, okay, uh, live view we've kind of covered. Uh, now if there's more than one camera, I think it would show up here, but at the moment just the one camera is showing up. And then on the timeline, I don't really have anything on my timeline because I haven't done any recordings, but if I do some recordings, um, in fact, I can probably just, this is where I go to look at my list of recordings. So what I might do is just jump back to the camera for a second and say, uh, if I can say always record, let's save that. So what happens then uh, is that if I now go to my uh, recordings, hopefully I'll sort of start to see, here we go, so we've got motion, full time and motion. So it was previously doing some recording on motion. I've now flipped it into full time. Um, so that's now what's happening. But I can pick one of these and say, let's just play it. Um, it's really, it's easy to get to. I can download it. Um, I can choose to delete it, which I'll do. Um, and there's some date range stuff up here, types of cameras, types of recording. So it's really nice and easy to quickly get at the information you're, you're after. All right, I'm going to try plugging in the um, the other camera again. It's a bit hard to tell whether the, the camera's at fault or if I'm at fault, so I'm going to give it another try and give it another chance to um, to see because I've not because uh, I've not used them before. It's it's uh, see it's a bit hard to know what I'm supposed to be looking for, but. Um, Let's try plugging in another network cable here and then plugging in the device. Let's just lay it down here for a second, see if it does anything. Just lay it down sort of by the switch maybe. Hi, this is Tom uh, coming to you uh, from the post recording edit. Now, as you've noticed, I had some real issues uh, getting this G3 online. And the reason was I didn't understand enough about Power for Ethernet. Now, the G3 uh, requires 24 volts um, PoE, passive PoE. And by default, the Unify switches uh, don't provide that, but they absolutely can do. You just need to change some settings on the switch. And the way you do that is like this. So from your dashboard, go to devices, select the switch where you're going to be plugging in your G3. And over here, you can see uh, all the different ports and choose the port that you're going to plug into. Let's say port seven here. And uh, here you can see uh, it's off because there's nothing plugged into it. Um, and your PoE status is shown here as well. And so you can have a choice between PoE off, PoE 24 volt passive. So click edit, um, choose the type you want. By default, it's on this PoE plus, and um, you want to move it over to 24 volt passive. Click apply. 
uh, allow it to provision. And once it's done that, it will then provide the 24 volt passive that the G3 needs. So if you look at port five here, I've already done this with port five and actually this one's plugged in, which is why it's lit up. And you get that little lightning, that little lightning here, that means it's providing 24 volts PoE. And that's actually powering a G3 right now. So if you do that, your G3 will light up um, and will work fine. If you don't have a Unify switch, you can use the Power for Ethernet power adapter. Um, and I actually go on to use that in the video because I didn't uh, understand all this stuff when I was recording because I was seeing it all for the first time. Uh, but now that I've had a chance to play with it, um, I wanted to put this head in so you could understand it. Um, and I've left everything in. Uh, I've left all, all the confusion and all my tryings in including using the power of Ethernet power adapter because I think it's useful to to see it because if I was coming across this problem then uh, I would want to see this on a video as well so um, that's how you do it the right way with the Unify switch um, I'm also about to show you how to do it using a power adapter as well and you can choose which of the two methods works best for you so here I have a um, power over ethernet then these come in the boxes the single box if you buy the uh, devices individually um, these come in the boxes there's power at the back LAN and then power over ethernet so what I'm going to do is unplug my camera pop it over there for now I'm going to take this and put it into the LAN then I'm going to take a new cable from the LAN power of Ethernet and then plug that into the camera. Um, I shall then plug in the power of Ethernet um, adapter. Do that over here. Plug that in and we'll see what happens. So this has got slightly messy now, so let's just move some stuff out of the way. Um, we'll keep the box there. Ah, now this is more interesting. I don't know if you can see this on the camera. Uh, the LED, sorry, the infrared uh, lights briefly lit up on the front, uh, showing at least something was happening. And also down on the here, the port switch is now lit up. Okay, so that's a really interesting and important point because I was worried for a minute that um, I'd been sent a dud Anyway, that's more encouraging. Um, there's no light on the front, although I don't know if you, you probably can't see because of how cameras work, but the infrared lights are all lit up on the front now. So um, if I go back to the dashboard and go to cameras, I can now see the G3 and it's showing as unmanaged, which makes sense. So I can go here as well. We now know that uh, UVNT is the default username and password. So I'll click manage and it's got yellow. Okay, which means it's doing something. Um, and so I'll close this and just wait for it to finish restarting or whatever it is it's gonna do. And I'll just wait for that to go green. All right, and if I now uh, look at a live feed of this one and just pick it up. Again, we can see as I move it, it is quick to, um, quick to catch up. If I hold it still enough, the autofocusing is actually, it's nice, it's good, it's, um, it's high quality less so if I'm moving it around like this, but that's obviously not what it's designed for. It's also designed for more kind of longer range than shorter range. I'm gonna do some review videos um, once I've mounted these outside um, and do a decent job of then, I'll, I'll take some imagery both at night and during the day. Um, just one other thing that's worth kind of pointing out, um, here there's some icons along the top to allow you to, um, to either you know get the sound um, and disable the microphone. You can look at the quality. Um, yeah, so you can look at the, um, you can change the quality at the moment by default, it's medium. You can flip that over into high if you wish. 
and you'll get obviously better quality but it will be slightly slower to refresh um, and then that that button there every time you click it it takes a screen grab and downloads it straight away so if you're watching something and you just want to capture that moment for a second you can quickly click the button um, and then there's a bunch of options here um, around how that display looks so you can change you know lots of uh, lots of how the how the uh, the video image looks all right so at this point everything is set up everything is working um, at this point I would go and um, or I am going to go uh, but probably not right away and connect all the cameras together put them all on you know on walls and on poles and wire them all in um, once I've done that I'm going to follow up with a review so check back if you want to see how everything looks when it's all set up but uh, that is my installation and configuration of the the Unify video system involving the network video recorder the G3 Dome um, and the G3 video camera. Thanks very much for watching.